It is estimated that it will cost the government $443 million to clean and clear roadways and drains of silts and debris following the recent passage of Tropical Storm Elsa. Now, while we are thankful that the damage was not extensive, we all can play our part to limit future spending. We can do this by properly disposing our garbage, stop building along gully banks, in path of rivers, or along low-lying areas, and end the use of slash-and-burn method to clear hillsides. Weathering this Atlantic hurricane season requires us to be our brother's keepers. Let's do what we can to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Keep we island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Now that tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. Keep we island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Now that tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. No dash no paper, no dash no plastic Dispose your garbage responsibly No know how to recycle, learn the pick And if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it Plastic snaps forever, don't forget the bits Cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed And when you want seafood, I eat your eat Keep your island clean, so clean From the peaks to the beach, so clean Now the tea of Jamaica, please don't do it not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica. Good day, I'm Sandra Johnson and this is your GIS News for Monday, July 12. The entertainment sector will be monitored over the coming weeks to ensure compliance with the COVID-19 protocols that govern the industry's reopening. Prime Minister Andrew Holness recently announced the reopening of the sector from July 1 to August 10 with stipulations for the capacity, operating hours and licensing of events in line with the Disaster Risk Management Act. But Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Desmond McKenzie, says there have since been widespread breaches of the law by industry players. Based on assessments, he says about 600 illegal parties have been held across the island since the special measures were announced. The minister was addressing a special meeting of the Trelawney Municipal Corporation on Thursday. He says government will better monitor activities within the entertainment sector and will clamp down on infractions where necessary. The minister also warned that if persons in the industry fail to comply with the prescribed protocols, government will be forced to take strong action. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging more developers to consider making investments along the Spanish Town Road industrial belt. Mr. Holness argues that the idle properties along Spanish Town Road are ideal for investment due to its prime location. Put together more deals, more transactions, get these properties that are just laying there some giving cover for criminals, others becoming dump sites, and others just sitting down there rusting and rotting away. Let's get all those idle properties into meaningful economic activity. The Prime Minister was speaking at Friday's groundbreaking for IMCA Jamaica's head office. IMCA is a sole dealer of Caterpillar equipment on the island, and its $8 million US dollar facility will be developed by Cygnus Real Estate Finance. 200 jobs are expected to be created in the construction phase, with 82 persons getting permanent jobs once the project is completed. Approximately 1.3 kilometers of zinc fencing is to be removed and new concrete barriers constructed in August Town. The activity is part of the social development component of the Zone of Special Operations ZOZO, which is currently in place in the community. Areas to benefit from the project are Cemetery Road, Africa Gardens, Bedward Gardens, June Road, Barrett Drive, Augustown Main Road and Bryce Hill Main Road. In addition, contracts have been signed with design consultants to rehabilitate or construct approximately 1.4 kilometers of roadway in the community this month. The Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, and the National Works Agency, NWA, are collaborating on this element of the development plans. The information is contained in the Augustown Community Zone Social Intervention Ministry paper, which was tabled in the House of Representatives recently. 
The document indicates that 24 micro-entrepreneurs have completed their business development training through the Integrated Community Development Project. Each entrepreneur has now received equipment with an overall value of $3 million. More students from the Portsmouth Primary School will benefit from a contribution of 50 tablets and protective cases valued at $1.4 million under the Ministry of Education's One Laptop or Tablet Per Child initiative. The devices were received from a collaboration between the Ministry of Transport and Mining and the Toll Authority of Jamaica. This will enable needy students who are not on the PATH program to better participate in online learning and make use of the facilities for remote teaching and learning provided by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. It was as a result, Minister, of your plea to the nation and to Jamaicans at home and abroad that the Ministry of Transport and Mining insisted that our educational system must benefit from whatever we have to give back. Chairman of the Toll Authority of Jamaica, Bill Shaguri, says this represents the first of two donations that the Toll Authority intends to make, with the second set to be distributed at the start of next school term. It is very important that the Toll Authority be involved and invest in education of our young people, especially at this time, when the Jamaica and the world is facing the scourge of COVID-19. Cabinet has given approval for the revised national policy for senior citizens to be tabled as a white paper in Parliament. Information Minister Favour Williams says Cabinet also noted the Ministry of Labour and Social Security's intent to develop legislation for the care and protection of older persons. The revision of the policy is in keeping with the commitment of the government to implement the comprehensive social protection strategy, including adequate safety nets and social protection floor that mitigates the risks to economic and social development. She says the policy will be implemented over a period of 10 years and the National Council for Senior Citizens will be responsible for monitoring the implementation of the policy and associated programs. And finally, government has plans to roll out a program this summer that will build the values and attitudes of boys and young men. The news was revealed by Gender Minister Oliver Grange at a function to open a new boardroom being named in her honor at the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation. She says the ministry also intends to provide solutions for boys living on the street and to expand programs that meet the needs of young boys and young fathers. We can't leave our young men behind. We're going to have to make sure that we work with them to help them to be better fathers and to be good citizens of Jamaica. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Sandra Johnson. Thanks for watching. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Find out some of the terms you should become familiar with this hurricane season. Every month of the year, there has been in our history some incidents of flooding that has taken place in some aspect of the country. And that is something that we have to take note of. Apart from monitoring and giving the forecast, we are also responsible for warnings. And so there are some warnings that we want you to take special heed to if you consider yourself to be vulnerable in any situation. When we speak about a flash flood watch, it means that there is a feature, some kind of weather system that is going to produce enough rainfall that makes it possible for you to get flooding. 
So it means start to watch because the water levels are going to be increasing and there is the possibility of the flooding. Now, if we start to see that in some area flooding has started to occur, or if we believe that the flooding has been so close to an area that it is going to happen in that area in a short space of time, we will escalate that flash flood watch and refer to it as a flash flood warning. So when we talk about a flash flood warning, it means not only that the flooding is possible, but the flooding either has already started to happen or is going to happen in a very short space of time because it is very close to that area. So it is important to know what the watch means as opposed to what the warning means. Usually with the warning, we will not only issue a warning, but we will also tell you what kind of actions are important or what you should not do. Like do not go through flooded waterways because it could pose a risk to your life and to your property. Also, if you live in low-lying or flood-prone areas, if it is an area that is regularly experiencing flooding, a flash flood warning for your area would mean that now is the time to move to higher ground because the flooding has already started or is going to happen very shortly. It is also important for us to know where we live because sometimes in our messages we might not refer to the actual town but we will tell you what part of the country the flood watch or the flood warning is relevant to. So if we talk about central parishes, we are referring to Clarendon. We're also talking about Manchester. We're also talking about St. Anne. These are central parishes. So you have to be knowledgeable of where you live so that you know whether the message actually applies to you. The messages that we issue for hurricanes and tropical storms are watches and warnings as well, like the flooding. But in this case, for a tropical storm or a hurricane, when we issue a watch, it means the conditions that are associated with the storm or the hurricane are possible within a certain time frame. If you hear tropical storm or hurricane watch, you could get the impact of that system within a day and a half, 36 hours. If we mention that it is a tropical storm or a hurricane warning, it means that you only have one day before that thing can affect you. So we are moving to how quickly you need to make sure that you are prepared by naming it a watch or a warning. So the watch is the first level of the alert that there is something that is likely to affect you. But when we move to a warning, it means now is the time to batten down because you most likely are going to experience that storm or hurricane. We might have a tropical wave, which is the least of, the, of, of them in that it can still cause a lot of rain and it can still cause flooding and devastation, but it will not have very strong winds associated with it. But then there is the tropical depression that is a little stronger because now you have winds that are moving with it, gusty winds, and it also has a lot of rainfall. Then you have tropical storms, which is a more severe kind of tropical depression because the winds are even stronger. And then if it gets even stronger, it could become a hurricane. So it's important that you have your radio and that your radio is battery controlled, not dependent on electricity, so that you can hear the warning messages that come from the meteorological service. Also bear in mind that if you dial 116, you will be able to hear the latest message coming out of the meteorological service related to any warnings. We cannot stop paying attention. We cannot let down our guard. You have to prepare yourself and stay prepared until we are out of the threat. The Forestry Department is leading the implementation of the National Tree Planting Initiative which seeks to plant three million trees in three years, one for each Jamaican plus a little extra for good measure. So I'm inviting each Jamaican to visit our nurseries across the island and collect your tree seedling and make your mark towards this great goal for Jamaica.
Here's a plant suggestion that's sure to improve the look and feel of your surrounding. And of course, you can get this plant from the forestry department. During a stroll down any Jamaican road in the summer, prepare to be stunned by the natural beauty of one of the planet's most beautiful trees. Its flaming red, orange or yellow flower sets it apart from the other flora around. When the wind caresses its umbrella-shaped crown, its parts make an enthralling sound. Oh yes, you've encountered the prismatic poinciana. It's a very popular tree in Jamaica and it's been planted for over a hundred years. Delonyx regia is a flowering member of the bean family. It's known here in Jamaica as the Royal Poinciana. Other parts of the Caribbean call it flamboyant, flame of the forest or flame tree. A native of Madagascar, a country off the coast of the African continent, this striking plant is a feature of many a Caribbean landscapes. It is also common in the tropical parts of Asia, the Pacific and Australia, as well as North, Central and South America. The Royal Poinciana is the official tree of Key West, Florida. It has also been the long-standing national flower of St. Kitts and Nevis. Not surprising then, that it would take its name from the man who is believed to have introduced the plant to the region, St. Kitts and Nevis's first French governor, Philippe de Pointe. It came to us via St. Kitts um, and was introduced at around the same time that Castleton was formed as a botanical garden. So it got here at the same time with some other legumes meaning um, trees that are in the bean family. So it's in the, the same section of the bean family as, say, Thinking Toe, which a lot of people know, um, and Logwood. This evergreen plant grows tall and fast, reaching heights of up to 12 meters in six years under favorable conditions. The Royal Poinciana's trunk can be wide but not overly large as it produces a light flimsy wood. Its bark is usually smooth and straight, but may extend into several stalks and grows low with regular pruning. The tree's big green buds burst open to reveal large showy pentamerous petals, complete with its fruit protruding through its center. This legume starts out soft, small and green, then ripens into a long, hard wooden brown pod. The seeds are large which means that they have enough food store to just exist in a room at ambient temperature. The plant grows easily from seeds or cuttings. As a member of the legume family, the leaves of the Royal Poinciana are compound in nature, comprising of several little leaflets. These fern-like leaves form a dense, unmistakable umbrella-like canopy, a well-needed respite from the hot summer sun. Because the flowers are so showy and conspicuous, uh, lots of people like to plant it. Um, over the years, we have had it in many parks, and it has generally reproduced itself in any possible space that it finds suitable. Though revered for its ornamental quality, the pods of the Royal Poinciana are also ideal for art and craft. You can make necklaces, bracelets, or art pieces by dabbing it with some paint. You may get a percussion instrument by shaking the pods, or you can make an actual marker by placing the seeds into a calabash. There are also um, studies of the chemical compounds found in the seed, but that's strictly um, 
an academic exercise. I gather from some searches that the, some folks in the Central American um, area use it medicinally. If you're interested in brightening up your piece of the rock with this flaming forest flower, then here are some things you may need to know. While incomparable in its beauty, the Royal Poinciana is an insect magnet. It's prone to termite infestation and has its own caterpillar that turns into moth along its bark. And this tree sheds. So depending on how you view the world, it could be a messy pile of flowers or your own summer snow. Due to its dense shade, the Royal Poinciana may prevent the growth of other trees. Its extensive root system may also pose a threat to your sidewalks. It's a tree that needs to be tended if, you, if you're going to put it in your yard. Um, but it's worth it because in a, in a good year of blooming, it is rather spectacular. If you're still mesmerized by this statement piece, you may purchase a plant with a color of your choosing from the forestry department. My name is Venice Blackstock Murray. I am an assistant director of public prosecutions in the office of the director of public prosecutions. We are extremely grateful to the EU for the contribution it has made to the justice system. We have benefited from the implementation of audiovisual technology within the courts, which allows us to take evidence from witnesses who will not be able to attend court personally. We know that the collaboration with the EU and the Ministry of Justice will help Jamaica to obtain a first-class justice system. COVID-19 and its effect have brought about a lot of stress and strain, so don't let down your guard. Watch this next feature to get tips on how to protect your immune system. And generally across the world, it is accepted that persons with substance use disorders and people who are chronic users, problematic users of various substances, particularly smoking. So you're smoking cigarettes, you're smoking ganja, you're vaping, and then also alcohol use puts you at a unique risk for developing the complications that are associated with COVID. The novel coronavirus that causes COVID-19 is notorious for attacking the human lungs. It's no wonder then that among the most vulnerable are people with compromised lung function or lung disease as a result of chronic smoking and alcohol abuse. The National Council on Drug Abuse is now more than ever urging Jamaicans to reduce and avoid excessive smoking and alcohol use. Though persons may feel the need to resort to substance abuse during the COVID-19 outbreak due to stress, worry and fear, this can be a detrimental move. Rather than relieving stress and worry, substance abuse will weaken the immune system, damage the liver and lungs, and put persons at greater risk for suffering the worst symptoms associated with COVID-19 and other life-threatening illnesses. Additionally, the behavioral practice of smoking also poses added risks. If a person's hands are contaminated, then putting a cigarette, spliff, or vaping device at their mouth will cause them to easily become infected with COVID-19. To reduce drug abuse among chronic users, the National Council on Drug Abuse has proposed a few coping mechanisms. Contact your relatives, friends, and ex-addicts if you are struggling with chronic drug abuse. They may not be able to physically be there with you, but a call can give you the encouragement you need. 
Having a healthy immune system is important to survive this and any other virus. So ensure you eat well and engage in regular exercise to boost your immune system. Some parents are experiencing additional stress by having to supervise their children at home during this time. Structure can make you more productive and lessen chaos. It can also be beneficial to ask your children to help create the schedule. Make time for alone time. Ask other family members in the home to supervise the children while you do something for yourself. Use the time to better yourself, create new habits, focus on what you need to learn, grow and give. Spend time pinpointing the things that are making you stressed and prone to abusing drugs. Try to address them one step at a time and find ways to distract yourself when these triggers appear. The National Council on Drug Abuse is now offering telecounseling throughout the island. For the Eastern Office, persons can call 876-926-9002 or 876-469-2521 for the Central Office and 876-940-2240 for the Western Office. Persons can also contact the General Helpline at 876-564-HELP. That's 876 876- 564-4357 Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five hours of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. That's all the time we have left on this station. Be sure to join us again tomorrow round about the same time for another program packed with your edification in mind. If tomorrow is too far away, visit us online at gis.gov.jm or our YouTube channel. Keep in touch with us, won't you? Email jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Download our mobile app and visit our social media pages. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.